Hi and welcome to BrettWeiss.com's Excel screencast on working with ranges. Hope you're having a good day. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you'd like the workbook to follow along, head over to BrettWeiss.com backslash Excel screencast and you can find this video and once you're on the video, if you look directly below you, there'll be a downloadable link to just click the link and it'll download the workbook and you can follow along. Everything's free on the site. So today we're going to be talking about a basic concept in Excel, one of the most fundamental concepts, and that's working with ranges. I'm going to take you through a couple different techniques for working with ranges. First are just general mouse techniques, and then after that we'll get into some quicker, more efficient keyboard shortcuts that if you are working a lot with Excel, I highly suggest you get familiar with and you really concentrate on working with ranges using the keyboard shortcuts. But let's start with the mouse techniques. Um, first is the most basic technique. If I want to select the cells, or if I want to select the range A5 to D17, my entire data set, I can click my left mouse button, drag it down to D17, release, and I have selected the range. One of the most basic, simple, intuitive approaches to selecting ranges. Um, one thing, maybe I was selecting the cells and I wanted to select the entire range like I just did but for some reason I only got to here and say my finger slipped off the mouse something happened I didn't select the entire range I wanted to no problem instead of going back up here and reselecting everything what I want you to do is just hold the shift key push the left mouse button on the cell you did want to select at the end of the range and Excel will automatically resize your range to select that cell other simple techniques to selecting ranges, if you want to select an entire column, head up to the column header, push the left mouse button, the entire range will be selected, the entire column, sorry. If I want to select an entire row, so I say I want to select row 8, head over to row 8, click the left mouse button, the entire row will be selected. That is fairly straightforward, um, and using the mouse is the more inefficient way to select ranges. If I want to really gain efficiency and be really fluent in range selection, I need to learn the shortcut techniques. And the keys that are most important for range shortcut techniques are the control button, the shift button, the home button, and the end button. First we're going to see what the control button does. So for that I want you to select cell A5, hold down the control button, and select the right directional arrow. So hold it down, select the right direction arrow, just notice what it does. What the control key does is when I push a directional arrow, Excel will navigate me to the edge of a continuous range. A continuous range just means that I have data in every one of these cells. There's no breaks. This is the first break in the continuous data. There's nothing in this cell. So when I push control and over, I take, it takes me to the end of the continuous range. Same thing if I want to go down, hold control down, I'll navigate to the end of the continuous range. We can go all the way around, back up to the top of the data. That's our first um, keyboard shortcut for, for working with ranges. Now, say, now you might say, well, that's great, but I actually want to select the range. So what do I do to select the range with the keyboard shortcuts? And for that, we're going to use the shift key. So if you hold down the shift key and press the right arrow over, you'll notice that now we have selected a range of two cells, A5 and B5. If I push it again and again, I selected the entire heading. If I move down, it'll start selecting the entire rows down, 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 down. I can go all the way down. But again, you might think that that would be no faster than the mouse, and you'd be correct. That is not faster than the mouse. But if we combine the two, now we're really getting somewhere. If you push Control, Shift, Right, you'll notice it selects it uses combines the control and the shift command to select the entire continuous range. Now, just imagine you had a hundred columns and thousands and thousands of rows of data. If you were trying to get the end of that data set and you use the mouse, you'd have to scroll over, you might not find it very easy, but this way, all you'd have to do, control over, you'd be at the end of the data set. If you wanted to select the entire data set, say you wanted to copy and paste it somewhere else, you just control shift right, control shift down, you would select the entire range. Really, really simple, much faster, much more efficient, much less hassle than using the mouse selection techniques. 
So now we have two worksheets on in this workbook. One is 2012 sales from you know random company. Um, the other worksheet is called 2011. If you click on that, you'll see 2011 sales, same setup. Now, what if we wanted to add a column to both of these worksheets? Say our boss said, well, this is great, but I want to see gross profit margin. And I want to see it for 2011, and I want to see it for 2012. Well, instead of going in and typing gross profit margin here, um, doing the formula, then going to this worksheet, doing the same thing, you know, what can we do to do it all at once? Well, if our data is set up like this and it's set up consistently, and by consistently I mean these rows and these, or sorry, these rows and these column headers are set up the same in both worksheets. What I really want to do is in both worksheets in cell E5, I want to enter the heading profit margin. Instead of doing it in both worksheets, I'm just going to enter it once and it'll enter into both of them. So how I do that is you can hold the control key, you're highlighted, you can see down here your highlighted, your highlighted worksheet is 2012. Now I want you to hold the control key and push 2011 and left click your mouse. Now you'll notice that this changed color. Now both of these cells you can see, or both of these worksheets, are actually white and that means they're both selected. So that means when I enter something into this screen, it's going to go on to both worksheets. So if I enter profit margin here, push enter, resize my columns, maybe I want to bold, I can hit control B and bold this. Now I have profit margin in the 2012 worksheet. So now let's see if it transferred and did the same thing in the 2011 worksheet. So I go over to 2011 and look it. It's right there. We have it on both worksheets now. It entered it into both worksheets. Now notice what happened when I clicked on 2011. All of a sudden 2012 is no longer selected. That means now whatever I enter into this worksheet will only be entered into this worksheet. I took off what is called the 3D range effect. So now I'm only entering data into one worksheet not both of them. But since I want to also enter the formula for profit margin into both worksheets, I'm going to again push control, select 2011, and now I'm going to enter the formula for uh, profit margin, gross profit margin, actually, maybe I'll put gross profit margin in here. Wouldn't want anybody getting mad at me for an incorrect formula. I'll resize the range. Now I'm going to select, put in the formula here, so just one minus, sorry, got to have the equal sign in there first, obviously. Then I'll use the keyboard to select expenses, divided by sales, hit enter, I have my profit margin there. If I double click right here, I can either double click here and notice when I double click it fills down until my range ends here which is just what I want and go up to home select percentage and now I have my gross profit margin percentages for each month and since I hit control and press 2000, the 2011 worksheet I can go over to 2007 and my profit margins are all in there it happened all at once instead of going to both worksheets and doing the same thing I just did it here once it's all done so now I go back to the 2012 row um, let's finish this up by maybe adding a totals row so I'll go down to cell A19 until to enter a totals row I'm gonna, I'm gonna bold that when I'm done but we'll just enter the sum formula here and actually what am I thinking not using the techniques I just taught you. We're going to press control, highlight the 2011 sheet because we're going to want to do this for both the 2012 and the 2011 sheet. So we're going to put in totals. We're going to go over here to sales and we're just going to put a simple sum formula. And now again with our formulas, instead of what you could do is take your mouse up here, select the entire range, and then we'd have our formula. But if you're selecting a huge range and you've got lots of data, 
it's not very efficient to do that. What you really want to do is if I back out of this, I'll put I'll push the up arrow to cell D17. Use our technique, control shift up. It selects all the way up. Now you see that the sales heading is highlighted there. This won't affect the formula, but just because I don't really want the sales, if I release control and keep my finger on shift, push the down arrow, I'll have the perfect range that I want. So now I've selected B7, B6 to B17, finish the formula by closing the brackets, and we have our total sum formula. We'll do the same thing with exp the expenses column, control shift up, release, release control down. We have our formula in place, gross profit, same thing, control shift up, shift down, Good to go for gross profit margin. Maybe my boss wants an average profit margin, something like that. It wouldn't make sense to sum the profit margin. So we'll put an average formula in there. Control shift up, shift down. And I want the total row to be bold. So I can press control shift over, select the range. Control B will bold it. Now we go over to our 2011 make sure that that copied over, it did, we have our totals row, our gross profit margin percentage average for 2011, gross profit margin percentage for 2012, and there you have it. That's the basics of working with ranges. I encourage you to practice your keyboard shortcuts. I want to thank you for watching this screencast on brettweiss.com. For all the other screencasts, if you want to, if you want to find them, just go to brettweiss.com backslash Excel screencasts. Thank you. Have a good day.